The evolution from Web 2 to Web 3. What is Web 3 and why is it needed? How Web 3 is transforming the internet and economies and the future of Web 3. Have you ever wondered what Web 2 and Web 3 actually mean? Is Web 3 more than just a buzzword? And what does the future hold for Web 3? My name is Seb Monty and I'm here to take you from zero to hero so you get a great understanding of everything related to Web 3 and blockchains. Now let's quickly outline our journey through the evolution from Web 1 to Web 2 to Web 3. Web 1, the static web. Let's start by understanding how the internet has changed over time. In the beginning, we had Web 1, which was like a library where we could only read information. It was a bit like reading a book, but not being able to interact with it. Web 1 started around 1989 until 2005. Then came Web 2, which was like a big playground where we could do so much more. We could chat with friends, watch videos, play games, and even create our own websites in a professional fashion without knowing how to code. It was like having the whole world at your fingertips. Web 2 started around 1999 to 2004, and now basically everything is Web 2. Web 3, the decentralized web. Web 3 is the next generation of the internet. It's built on blockchain technology, which is a secure and transparent way to store data. With Web3, you have more control over your data and money. You can choose who to share your data with, and you can't be locked out of your accounts. Web3 is needed because the current internet, Web2, is centralized. A few big companies like Google and Meta, Facebook, control most of the internet. They collect your data and use it to sell ads to you, as well as change opinions, create narratives, and who knows what else. This means that these companies have a lot of power over our data and our lives, and they actually own our data. When you sign up to use their services, you have to tick terms and conditions that no one ever reads that gives them the right to all of our data. Web3 aims to decentralize the internet so that no one company has too much power. Web2 versus Web3 Data Web2 is the internet we use today. Our data is owned by companies. Web3 data is yours. With Web3, you have more privacy, security, and transparency when it comes to your data. You can see all the data on a public blockchain, but you don't know whose data it is unless the person chooses to link it to themselves. You can connect to applications on the blockchain, no matter where you are or who you are. It is the internet literally for everyone. Web3 uses decentralized networks. And decentralized means there is no single point of control. In the context of Web3, this means that your data and money are not stored in a single place. Instead, they are stored on a network of computers, so no one person or company has control over them. Web2 versus Web3 – Money Web2 banking is what we all know. You go into a bank, you provide identification, you open accounts, you run out of money in your account, and they charge you a fee for not having enough money in the account. There's actually over 1.4 billion people in the world that don't even have a bank account. They're called bankless. Web3 also changes how we handle money. So unlike Web2, where you need a bank or other financial institution to store your money and make payments, Web3 allows you to use decentralized applications, dApps, to manage your finances. This means you have more control over your money, greater security, and freedom from traditional banking limitations. In 2023, it's my belief that you still need both banks and blockchains. But over time, we are seeing a massive acceleration in the number of users stepping into the Web3 blockchain system. Here's a quick benefit. With Web3, you can send and receive money to anyone, regardless of their location or political beliefs. And on the Solana blockchain, which is one of many, you can send your money in a couple of seconds, like two seconds, for a lot less than one cent. So I could send 1,000 digital US dollars from Portugal all the way to Argentina. In the Web2 system, it would take days and it would likely cost more than $20 in fees. How is Web3 transforming the internet and economies? Web3 is paving the way for new businesses to be created. For instance, dApps are being developed on Web3 that enable people to play games, invest in assets, and create their own social media platforms. The future of Web3. The future of Web3 holds a promise of a more fair and open internet. Here are a few ways Web3 is revolutionizing our online experiences. Decentralized finance, DeFi. DeFi systems allow people to lend, borrow, and invest money independently of traditional banks. Remember the 1.4 billion people that don't have a bank? If they have a mobile phone and internet and the Web3 space, that's all they need. Non-fungible tokens, NFTs. NFTs can enable people to own digital assets, such as art, music, and in-game items, and owning the rights over their digital property. We are in a digital world. The number of young people, and people alike, that are playing games like Fortnite where they're spending billions of dollars a year on digital items. 
the metaverse. The metaverse could offer a more open and democratic environment than the real world, where people can create their own identities and interact in previously unimaginable ways. If you're from a developing country, you may not be taken as seriously as a candidate for a job in, say, Australia or England or the United States. But if you have a system based on meritocracy, as in if you're really good or the best, then in Web3, it doesn't matter where you are. Gaming. Web3 Gaming is a transparent platform where players truly own their in-game assets as NFTs. This allows for real-world trading, selling or lending of these assets to other players. I played a few games in my 20s, and sometimes I spent thousands of dollars on games, such as Clash of Clans. It was lots of fun, but when I decided to not play it anymore, all that time and effort into the game was not transferable to anyone else in any form. So that's some of the ways of the future of Web3. And there you have it, from Web1 to Web3. I hope this video has shed some light on Web3. If you're hungry for more knowledge, don't forget to check out our other videos on related topics. Remember, knowledge is power, and with blockchain, we're unlocking a world of endless possibilities. Stay curious and keep exploring.